Hey, what's up guys? Uh, today we've got the first in a series of videos. I've been asked a few times to follow up the TVP guide, you know, make a part two and go on to other generations. And I figured it would be better to focus on specific parts of these metagames, little intricacies, you know, the ins and outs of the ins and outs, so that you can really just get better at more at more than just a surface level. So you can be like, yeah, I know the metagame, how do I keep going? And the aims of these videos are not to make you an unbeatable colossus because that's just not how Pokemon works, I'm sorry to tell you. But uh, it will give you a lot to go on, and it's a lot better advice than just, all right, we'll hear the basics, now go practice until it makes sense. Now, I, while I do encourage you to have your own view on the game uh, and get that view by playing and seeing what works, sometimes you need a starting point. So uh, this video will tackle some higher level stuff. I mean, this isn't, you know, some sort of you need to quintuple switch 16 battles in a row with Stealth Rock up before you truly understand how the tier works or something stupid like that, I promise. But uh, my definition of better in Pokemon is not what you can do in any one game, because anyone can just mash some buttons and look like a genius for one game. What impresses me more, well, I mean, obviously, if a guy plays his ass off in a game, then yeah, I'm going to go like, yeah, that was, that was really good. But if you can do that consistently, that is being good. Uh, so this is how I'm going to try and help you become a more consistent player in uh, many aspects via the metagame. And that sounded really pretentious, I'm sorry. So let's just get into it. So we're going to start off with Gen 4 and a topic that is kind of hot button, depending on how you view it. Most of it uh, relating to what time period you're from, but it's a part of the game, so we deal with it. So this topic is, as you can tell by the title, figuring out your opponent's last. So um, as with competitive Pokemon as a whole, this isn't going to work every time, obviously, because winning competitive Pokemon every time just not realistic, and I'm sure you know if you play this at all. Uh, so, this is not an exact science, but there is very much a method to it, so I'm going to start off with some background. And you won't just be uh, listening to me yammer over this horrible graphic I put together the entire time. We are going to have uh, some real game examples, but for now, bear with me. So, um... If you're like me and you started in Gen 4, then, you know, figuring out what the other guy might have it's just kind of a given, and sometimes you got pretty good at it. Like, hey, this guy has spikes and a bunch of pursuit bait? Might be a Lucario. Then I uh, got into the elites uh, talking about it, or I uh, became privy to the elites talking about it. And they had like a real method of figuring it out, and that just blew my mind. Um, there was a whole seminar on it uh, eight years ago. Christ. And uh, Husk, in particular, he was talking about figuring out how your opponent plays and uh, trying to figure, um, use that to figure out what his team might be. Because, you know, while we might be the best Pokemon players in the world, we are also human, and therefore none of us are perfect, and sometimes we have intentions. Now, um, let me first clear it up by saying this is not going to be a predict every turn uh, how to be a genius at Pokemon video, because that doesn't exist. I'm a believer that, yeah, while sometimes you might be able to just make the other guy look like an idiot, just embarrass the hell out of him, but that's one game, and if you can do that consistently, no one can do that consistently. I've been playing Pokemon for a long time, and there are those guys who sometimes just make the other guy look stupid, and other times they look stupid. If that's your style, then, you know, I'm probably not going to convince you, but... Getting those consistent records, you know, turning that 5-4 and four into a 6-3, and three, for example. Okay, I'm just pulling these numbers out of my ass. But, that's the idea. So, uh, going back to the whole consistency, consistency thing, this isn't a predict your opponent's Heatran to switch out guide. This is a play to the state of the game. What you ideally want to have every turn is a move you make. That the guy, he can know it's coming all he wants, he cannot do anything about it. Um... I'm going to use the example of uh, Choice Scarf Flygon having locked into Earthquake to kill whatever. So, and let's assume you don't have Stealth Rock up. So you send in your Zapdos, and then you switch right to your Skarmory. Right? Because you're thinking, hey, that guy's probably bringing in his uh, Blissey or his T-Tar or something. And Skarmory can spike all over you. It's not getting the specifics. And if he does stay in an Earthquake because he's predicting a switch, who cares? He can't do anything about it. He would have to start doing... like 
ridiculous things like switching Starmie into Zapdos with a free Thunderbolt or dumb shit. I'm saying, not saying that doesn't exist, but I'm saying it's just an example, so don't read too much into it. But you want to be playing to the state of the game, right? If you want to do that whole turn by turn, I'm just going to guess that this guy's switching out and click the not very effective move and just hope it works. Yeah, it will work sometimes. That's just how Pokemon is as a game. Even GSC, the most skill-intensive tier agreed by most people, then Charizard Master 98 could beat Earthworm on any given day. Just how Pokemon works. What Charizard Master 98 could not do is beat Earthworm at all consistently. I mean, hell, he might even take two out of three games from him. Pokemon is weird. But I don't think anyone would argue that Charizard Master 98 would have a more consistent SPLC, for example. So, uh, let's get into the specific. But earlier I said uh, Husk was like, you have to use your opponent's tendencies and how he plays. And uh, the example he gave was uh, Heatran blowing up on Vaporeon immediately. So, granted, you have to, you do kind of have to assume that your opponent has some semblance of what he's doing. And so this might backfire, but generally most people will, you know, think about it. And uh, if they aren't the type to think about it, you can also factor that into how they're going to play. I once had a game against a guy who did one of the stupidest moves I've ever seen, and it happened to work out. Um, he kept his uh, Scizor in on my Heatran. Where, I, I don't remember. He kept something in on something that easily just outran and destroyed it when he needed that thing, or else he would cleanly lose to XYZ. So if I just tunnel visioned it, I would have pretty much won on the spot. Um, Hopefully you were able to keep up there. Uh, I'll answer any questions in the comments. But, uh, so that's the example. And so some people, yeah, they are just going to give you that thing you need to automatically win the game. So that's, but, um, where I was going with that was, I realized later, he was the kind of guy to do that and not really think things through, so that might give me, like, an extra kill that could be key down the stretch. And that's exactly what happened. He kept his something out of my Zapdos when he had a, a counter, and I just took it out because I figured, well, that's his game. That's how he plays. So that's all about figuring out the opponent. And uh, yeah, so the Husk example of Heatran blowing up on Vaporeon, uh, you don't see too many Vaporeons these days, but this was eight years ago. And uh, if he's really trying to get that Vaporeon out of the way, because Heatran isn't just something like, no, oh, Heatran, who needs this thing, right? Uh, it's not some suicide uh, stealth rock we like Aerodactyl. No, he, if you, you're you really trying to get that Vaporeon out of, out of the way, you probably have something like a DD Gyarados that's just like Vaporeon, enemy number one. Get rid of it. Uh, and if the other guy's Vaporeon goes down, his Gyarados answers are probably not great. Uh, that's an example. So that's the theory, and we'll get into more of the practical applications later. But yeah, um, sometimes guessing the last mod, because remember, to some extent, it is guessing. Some people, then they're like, you know what, I know. Uh, like when 6A9 Ace Matador used to play, he would just call it out in the battle chat. Um, probably not a great idea to just let your opponent know, you know, I'm on to you, you son of a bitch. But uh, that's the idea. He would do it consistently, figuring out how they're playing. So, and their team composition. Like, if some guy has five Pokemon, just say, destroyed by Heatran, then his last is probably going to be okay with it. Goes on the flip side, too. If you've got, um... Pokemon, um, score over the course of a long game, for example, and that guy's only shown his fifth Pokemon, and he's kind of struggling with it, it's probably reasonable to assume that last Pokemon did not do too hot again, or he'd be using it, right? Alternatively, it needs to be like a sweeper or something that needs to be in good condition. Uh, for example, if you're trying to sweep the air out, are you really going to be switching the thing just to start people from Fire Blast? with Stealth Rock up, God forbid. So, it's that kind of thing. Uh, so you put these kinds of factors together, and ideally, you can try and figure out the other guy's team. So, that's pretty much uh, the entire theory of it all. And uh, it, it can seem overwhelming, I know. Like, how am I supposed to figure that out? It's hard. And it, it is hard. You, you gotta do it over and over again, and try. Just play a bunch of games with one of your buddies. Just try to figure out his stuff. Knowing the common teams in the metagame is another thing that will help, but I'm not just saying memorize every team that's ever been used. I'm saying know what goes well together. Um, to maybe set your eyes, your uh, mind at ease a little more, 
Realistically, this is every single Pokemon you're going to see in a DVP uh, OU game. I left out some of the other nonsense that's technically an OU, like Dustmore and Electivire, but I I hope the point is clear that um this it, and this is I mean a good chunk. And obviously, if the last guy's last Pokemon is Heatran, that's you know miles away from it being Venusaur. But uh, if you know what goes together commonly and what teams need in DPP, and uh, how the other guy's playing, then you will begin to develop a sense for it. So, um, yeah, some of these are borderline picks. I mean, Rhyperior, not that he's bad. I, I think he's great, but a little borderline. Vaporeon, it's been a while. Quagsire, same thing. But, uh, yeah, that is that's the principle. So, um, let's see, what else is there? I think that is every so uh, to sum it up a little bit. Then uh, know the meta game, practice it a lot. Practice this whole thing a lot, right? Uh, know what goes well together. Like a, uh, a frail offensive team with, let's say, Explosion Gengar and Kindra and like a Boom Heatran. Then you know what's coming out. Probably this guy uh, in Polyar, right? So, uh, and again, not exact science. I couldn't give you a percentage, but um, it works pretty well. But again, nothing certain. That's why you have to play to the state of the game. So it's like, I don't know his last, but based on what I've known so far, then this is what makes the most sense, and this is how I can defend against uh, this common last Pokemon that's going to try and um, destroy me. Like, uh, oh, I, I didn't know he had a Lucario. How could... I have known, and he set up on my Scarf Tar and just swept me. And uh, this is, hopefully, uh, once you take these lessons a little bit to heart, then you can um, use these so it's not guessing as much as... Just remember, Pokemon is all about making uh, the best assumptions to put, give yourself the best odds and that kind of thing. E even with team preview gems. Then, you know, this guy's Landorus should be Scarf, or else he loses to insert stupid Pokemon. But he used Swords Dance, and now I'm fucked. And that kind of thing. So, uh, I, I hope the theory's clear at this point. So, know the metagame, know what goes well together, know what teams need. Um, practice it a lot, obviously. Note how your opponent's playing. Um, and if he's got, he, he's the kind of guy to seem like uh, he's got a plan, then, you know, then it should make sense. If he's just clicking, you gotta adapt to it. So, and it's tough. It's not uh, it's easier said than done. But yeah, so now let's go see how this works out in practice. And if you have any questions on the theory stuff, then I'm more than happy to answer. So, we're going to start off with this game from World Cup. And uh, yeah. So, uh, we're not going to sit through the whole thing. And I used games in uh, the last year or so. Um because I, there are a lot of great examples, but a lot of them are in log form, and, you know, so we don't want this to go on forever. So, uh, we can see here, already, we're guessing, and it's a pretty good guess. Need a Queen Starmie? This is probably not hyper-offense, you know? This is, like, balanced at, in its most offensive form, possibly. Heatran, Tyranitar, this is, with a Stealth Rocking Heatran lead? Yeah, it could be semi-stall, but no, it's, it's, uh, it's not... Especially defensive, it's an offensive team, both the offense. So, uh, oh, Reflect Starman, are you kidding me? So, uh, this could be a lot of things. So, uh, this is the semi stalling type, almost always a T Tar to help in the hazard game. Uh, Fables, possible, I mean, lots of things are possible. Call Mine, Jirachi, not Jirachi in general, because it's really good. Bronze on, uh, Special D Heatran, Special D Skarm. Um, the Zapdos here, I mean, these three already, they resist fighting. He is good to have Lucario. This is a good example of a... This is a counter example, I guess. This guy's got like three fighting resistances in his first three pokes. I'm guessing if there's a Lucario or an Infernape here, it's probably going to do at least decently against these last three, right? So, because I mean, how many more fighting checks are you going to fit? And then you start having some serious overlap and you're not covering everything. And... So there's a Tyranitar. Um... Starmie on these kinds of teams can be anything, but we're not we're not delving into specifics right now of this particular battle and team because it's more of a general thing. 
So uh, we're going to uh, skip ahead a little bit. So all right, here's a big one. So Iron Ball Metagross. That does not just happen. Okay? I mean, Metagross is a great Pokemon, but Iron Ball, something's up. You know, you don't just slap that on a team. Yeah, yeah, it's fine. I mean, yeah, sure. Now you can hit Skarmory, Bronzong, Zapdos, if you catch it, Rotom. Fantastic. Awesome. But generally, you're trying to bait that in, because Metagross on its own is not going to be a great standalone sweeper. So, something in the back. Let's analyze this. So, Rocks. This is not Choice Scarf. Not that, that would be a good Choice Scarfer. Yeah, this seems kind of slow, don't you think? It's, it needs something fast. Huh. Okay, um, it could also use some more physical presence, given all these special attackers that don't love Tyranitar and Blissey necessarily. I'm not saying a physical choice card is going to help, but yeah, look at that, it's Flygon. He uh, gives another, I mean, Flygon does a lot of things defensively, you know, electric, rock, ground, X resistance is fantastic. But most of all, once Skarmory takes an Iron Ball or Bronze on, Flygon gets to spam Earthquake, and he revenge kills for the team, it just makes sense. So. Uh, not saying it had to be Flygon, I could also see, like, Rotom there, I guess. it could be Rotom or Jirachi, I guess. Um, you know, ground concerns aside, with uh, the steels being what they are. But, uh, now you understand how this one just, it clicks, okay? So now we don't even have to see the rest of the game. But uh, that was the example. He had the six, and he was like, you know what, This it's, I probably have to be careful with my Bronzong's health, because now I'm going to have to take an Earthquake. I mean, none of these guys are really like, oh, Metagross with Iron Ball? Yeah, I, I love having that as a partner. Um, yeah, I think that's that's pretty clear. Uh, they've got Grass types covered. I mean, they certainly do. So, uh, yeah. Let's move on. Here's an example that's just pitifully easy. easy. Um, I tried to pick some good ones. Uh, so this one I'm going to let you figure out for yourself. This one is kind of clear. So um, we're going to put this on fast. I'm just going to pause it when the time comes. So already you're seeing, you know, feasibly could be semi-stall. Probably not. You know, Jirachi. Eh. So, oh, and uh, here's another thing. What does that tell you? What does, uh, let, me, let me go back. What does Jirachi being the first to the advantage like? I don't want my main counter to take 75 from CV Crunch. No, what it tells you is, these other folks, probably not great against Tyranitar, especially Unrevealed. So, um, yeah, I mean, he could have something like, uh, I don't know, Flygon or uh, Breloom that help, and I, whew, that that really helps him. But uh, what we're going to see here, what's he, what's he got? Yep, he's got Breloom. So, but yeah, Breloom is, uh, it's, it's decent, but uh, wouldn't want it to be my first switch, because your first switch would probably want to do some damage back, right? So Jirachi can threaten Titar out big time, whereas Breloom, if it's fearful of Mach Punch, or uh, Mach Punch, I'm sorry, of uh, Fire Blast or Ice Beam on the follow-up, who the hell is messaging me? Um, yeah, that's good advice. Um, sorry, so but if Breloom's got a fear for the... Uh, the Fire Blaster just being too KO'd by Crunch, and it's just going to mock Punch, then the other guy can get off scot free. So, it's an example of saving it off for the time being, but not doing a uh, great job in the long run. So, he's really going to be wanting to set up his own rocks and just having a plan for beating him down. Because, as, he, as you can tell, he does not want to give that Terrence Hard free switches. Yep. So, uh, he's going to take a risk and spore, knowing he doesn't want to risk the. Mock Punch, so that's already tough. Now, you should be thinking about what's probably going on here. It's Scizor. Scizor has gone down in usage over the years. Uh, it can be Choice Scarf, it can be Swords Dance. Likely, likely to set this uh, bulky Swords Dance at this juncture. So, and I mean, he's got the support. He's got some of the support, at least. Tyranitar and Jirachi, they can do a lot of things. To uh, Jirachi's got Stealth Rock, which then means it can lure whatever it wants. It can use HP Ground to lure Heatran, number one thing. Tarantara can bust up uh, Skarmory and Pursuit Rotom and stuff. So, you gotta be thinking, this guy got a Heatran? I don't think so. Um, what's he weak to? He's got no Ground Resistance, that's for sure. Flygon, I mean, Scizor is pretty good against Star Flygon end game, but you can, you can, I mean, though, these three, I mean, this is Flygon City. 
Ah, uh, you gotta give me something. Fighting? Nothing here. Uh, so, what could be next? Um, uh, and here. I mean, if here we don't, uh, necessarily need to see, um, we don't necessarily need to analyze the team. We need to analyze how he's been playing. He's, his playing is saying, Titar scares my dick off. So I really gotta be careful around that thing. So we're thinking, we're thinking things that are either setup sweepers, maybe, possible, or things that are scared to death of Tyranitar. So, I mean, it, it, if it got better against Tyranitar, it probably would have shown its face by now. There's the ground and fight. Helps against waters as well. Uh, and there... Oh, fuck, damn it, I wanted to pause. Okay, you know, whatever. Um, I was going to say, at this point, you should have guessed Starmie. Because, uh, you know, another uh, fighting resist helps with hazards, which is big. Because, I mean, even if you lure... Um, even if you lure the ground and then you lure the Skarm with these two, Spikes are still going to force this or to roost a lot. And it's just uncomfortable. Not to mention Stealth Rock with Zapdos. Not loving it. This team isn't purely Wreckham offensive enough to be able to go without it. So Starmie is just a no-brainer. Not to mention offensive check to Infernape. Are you kidding me? Infernape would have destroyed him totally otherwise. He's got Zapdos to help sponge a U-turn. Uh, including and Scizor and his own ape and Trachin. So uh, he has the tools to play around it, but Starmie really gives him that full option. If you had said Tentacruel, I would have taken it too. Because Tentacruel functions similar to Starmie, but Starmie is like, you know, top five at the very worst. And he gets used a lot. So, yeah, it's, it's, it was going to be Starmie all the time. Meanwhile, uh, in I'm Scared of T-Tar City over here, he... That's not quite the Starmie switch I expected. Um, yeah, he goes to his ape, which Scarf, because it's in the lead position. And uh, he was thinking, if I see a uh, Tyranitar switch for my Starmie with Pasho, then Ape is going to have a good matchup against it. Including things like Blissey, Zapdos. Speaking of Blissey, see these two terrified of uh, Tyranitar. So now we don't even have to see the end of the game. The purpose has been served. So I hope this was another example. Here's a bit of a weirder example. I, I don't want to say weirder, but um, I, I think it'll drive the point home. I mean, weird because look at the two lead choices, right? So, um, yeah, this is pretty clearly some semi-stall stuff, but let's start thinking right away. With this, I mean, this is a Suicune lead. I mean, I've seen that in a few stall teams, but in defensive heat transfer, I, I don't know what to think here. So here... Here, uh, this is where unconventional choices can pay off. I mean, you got the other guy thinking, what the hell am I facing? But um, he's, he's going for the free spike with Skarm, because he's like, you know what, probably not a Magnezone here. I don't think Sweet Coon Starmie is as popular as it was at 1.7 years ago. Seven and a half, I'm sorry. So, um, yeah, he, he's doing fine here. Nothing to really be scared of. Um... So, I mean, this double water thing. So now you're really thinking, what the hell am I facing? And uh, with a team like this, a uh, defensive team, you're kind of like, I, got, I, better, I better preserve the right thing. So he's already thinking pretty hard. So. Colber Rotom? I mean, what the hell's going on here? But uh, one thing you will notice, if that Rotom's not Scarf, and then this team is slow. The maximum speed stat on this team is what, 317? Uh, is it? No, no, I'm sorry, it's 295. Or 298, I'm sorry. I thought Kingdra was a lot faster. Um, but yeah, 298, so that, that is a pretty slow team. I mean, I'm not saying he's destroyed by Infernape or anything, but he would not enjoy facing Starmie or Gengar or anything. Uh, I mean, he'd have a lot of trouble generating pressure in a lot of matchups. Not that he doesn't have measures for, you know, Spidef, Spidef, okay against Gengar. Um, even with something fast, it's probably not that great against Gar. But, uh, so here comes the threat. This is what this uh, replay was chosen for. Because, I mean, two waters, probably Ice Beam Muta Queen. I mean, probably not having a lot of great Gliscor answers. And we see that by when this, uh, this guy comes in at the end. I mean, it's Scarf for like Jirachi at least, Ice Punch, Trick, something. But when Suicune's coming into Gliscor, that is a. But for eight years plus, that has been a sign, yeah, this guy loses to Gliscor. As, uh, as you can see, Gliscor is outlasting the hazards. It's what he's been doing for a while now. And Suicune is rather prone to them, especially because this one uses Substitute. That is a sign, alright, my Gliscor is really good. 
I don't care if I predict 1000% that he's going to use Calm Mind, I'm still switching to Quick Ape. Because why else? You know, state of the game. Gliss score is more important than my need to be correct on a single turn. Right? So I'm just playing around it because it's what um, these semi stall teams do. And, uh,. Yeah, so we're just gonna skip ahead. So we're thinking, okay, but what could it be? It's gotta be, it's probably fast, you know? Um, he's also not very good against a, uh, something as simple as a Tyranitar with Earthquake. It's not great. So um, he's probably gonna want something, something fast, something that doesn't completely fold the Tyranitar. But with a team like this, it's really hard to predict, but that's also another good example. It's slow, that's the thing. I mean, if Starmie has such free, so many freebies against all these guys and your best response is a Kingdra. I mean, his hazard game is probably going to be better than yours, and he's not going to have a tough time responding to this. Now, I'm not saying this last Pokemon Scarfer is going to, you know, solve all your problems, but it'll be something. Um, but that's not really the point of this, as the point I was trying to illustrate about Gliscor being the winner, you don't risk this guy. And you foist him on whenever you want. Here's how much you don't for, uh, waste this guy. You preserve him in the face of Ice Beam. Because Nita Queen was not in uh, in range for that, and now uh, not, not in range for Earthquake, so you switch out. You don't risk shit. And there's Flygon. See, I mean, Flygon being walled by Gliscor is like the oldest trick in the DTP book. That is like textbook. Yeah, keep this thing away from me. So, uh, and now Gliscor is going to win the game. So I hope that example was uh, illuminating. As blah blah, Gliscor wins. Who could have seen it coming? Okay. Here's a weirder example. So, um, yeah, as soon as you see this shit, then you're kind of like, okay, well, well not this, I guess. Akagross is normal, Trick Scarf Uxi is somewhat normal, but as soon as the Magnezone comes in, then you're kind of like, alright, something's up here. This is not going to be your traditional, uh, yeah. And then Swamper comes in, and Gengar thinks he's got a free switch, and Choice Specs Hydro Pump. So now you're just kind of like, well, this could still make sense. That's uh, a kind of both the offense scene, but Azal comes in, Dragonite DDing, making sense with the zone. Uh, Gengar tends to lure and steals. Uh, zone picks him off. Jirachi comes in, and it's sub slam, and you're just kind of like, all right, where, where's the continuity here? Uh, Para helps spec Swamper? I don't know. Where... Metagross would have gotten a Brox and Uxie, so Azal probably had him. Um, Metagross comes in, and, uh, Agility, so that makes sense, too. Um, but here's where it gets tough, because, uh, Swamper comes in, and Magnet Rise, so you're thinking, yikes. Uh, not that it's not good, but Gengar is in here, and, uh, now you're thinking, well, what the hell, this is, like, some sort of weird offense team. And, uh, he Earth Powered there, and I, hmm. Well, let's pause it for a second, because then Thomas' timer goes from 285 to 45. So, you're thinking, what the hell was he thinking about for over 240 seconds? Well, he's trying to figure out that last. Because traditionally, it would be like a Kingdra, right? I mean, it makes sense to me. It's it's similar to a, a few teams that have existed over the years. Uh, bait in the T-Tar, fuck with it somehow, Kingdra goes crazy. And uh, Thomas' team is kind of like, well, how the hell do I respond to this? I mean, this is crazy. I mean, on Dragonite, Metagross, Magnezone offense, usually you don't see an Uxi lead. You don't see a Gengar with them either. So, I mean, even though in retrospect we can say, well, he doesn't have the Zapdos counter, then we're kind of thinking, well, what if ration, rational thinking, uh, rational discourse, rather, just kind of went out the window with this guy when he was making this team. And uh, you can put you uh, put some doubts in your head especially during game time which is when you're gonna be up when you're gonna have to be doing this so um, he thought that, how am I gonna tackle that last and um, it, it's hard to say so this is where the exact science bit does not work out I wanted to point that as an example so he explodes and we see his last is Hyranitar so before that uh we three Kings last comes out we're thinking all right so he thought Kingdra probably Pasho so we can say this, this T-Tar is not Scarf. Um, and, because Scarf would lose to pretty much any Kingdra here. Uh, well, wouldn't lose to Specs. No, it, it, it does to Specs, I'm sorry. 
But yeah, so we're thinking, alright, Pasho, so he's really getting geared up for that Kinder Assault, and it's something weird, like, I mean, T-Tar beats a lot of things one-on-one, -on -one, but, uh, nope, it's Infernape. And since it's not a Scarf Tar, there is no hope in hell that he's going to come out on top. And the 8 there is just kind of like, I'm sure he had a reason, right? But it's not really one you can follow along as. So this is an example of, doesn't always work. And uh, that's why this one was selected. Alright, last example, and uh, this one's going to be another uh, weirder one. So, uh, Zapdos Machamp, this is pretty standard stuff. T-Tar, even more standard. Uh, T-Bolt. And you're thinking, that's doing a lot. You do your calcs, we're not going to get into that. But we see uh, Band. Didn't want to risk a U-turn on Scarf. And uh, here, he's assuming Scarf, because, you know, most Flygons are. And uh, very rarely early in the game, well, Flygon just outright click Earthquake. The one that might is a mixed set, and we're going to slow it down. But um, this is where metagame knowledge in is a thing I wanted to highlight. Because Mixed Flygon very rarely shows up just because. I'm not sure it's good, but it's pretty specific at doing what it does, you know, handling balance and semi stall teams. I mean, one of its biggest targets is Gliscor. So when you're thinking eliminating Gliscor, and then, you know, who's the number one guy? I'm thinking Lucario, right? Or something like that. Uh, something like that also being just various physical stuff, like a DD Dragonite. I'm probably not trying to go head to head with uh, Gliscor, because you're also. Um, Fire Blasting Scarms, ideally, and Draco Meteoring Perts, but generally Gliscor is like mixed Flygon's thing, you know? Um, and uh, same with like Ice Beam T-Tar. Most of Ice Beam T-Tar does not happen by accident. You you're trying to hit something, and uh, that illustrates the point that the reason you're trying to figure out the other guy's team uh, is because his team was built to have synergy, right? It it has its own thing. You're trying to figure out what his thing is. He didn't, he didn't just slap things, probably. He didn't just slap things together and be like, yeah, you know, good enough. But um, he was like, yeah, you know, this will help my thing sweep. And that's why I uh, that's why I used it. I tried to figure that out. So you can nail that last thing. So figuring out that last Pokemon is less guessing and more informed decision. You can call it educated guessing if you want. I think I'm not going to call it, say that it's an art, but I'm going to say that there's a lot of nuance to it. And again, not exact science as we saw, and as a matter of fact, we'll see here. Uh, now, so this is general bulky offense stuff, right? Like, you can make a case for this shit better have Titar or Jolteon or Zapdos is going to destroy it. He could have XYZ thing on Heatran or Garachi or even Zapdos and be like, you know what, I disagree. We might not find out. Actually, we're not going to find out. But, um, so, but generally, uh, it's really the glaring weaknesses, you know, like the, holy Christ, Infernape destroys you. This guy probably has Gengar or something. Here we're trying to figure out the more offbeat thing. Machamp, T-Tar, Drachi, you know what? Bulky offense, paralysis spam. CB-Tar loves, uh, that kind of thing. And we're thinking resist, but we're also thinking, you know what, this guy's going off the grid a little. Because uh, usually Machamp is not the lead on these teams. Machamp fully abuses that para. And, uh, yeah, so we have to consider it might not be quite what we expect. But we're also thinking, you know, Uxia is like the strongest fighter counter there is. So maybe we can tr sort of mentally scratch off Pokemon such as Rotom um, or Celebi or something. Um, and I apologize, it might have been better if I just did, like, a full game or something, but I wanted to really show the more, uh, various spectrums of how this can be. And this isn't covering, you know, everything that exists, but it, it's ideally a start, and if uh, a lot of people really want me to, then I can do more of uh, this kind of thing, I suppose. Because this is really how you become good at DPP, uh, figuring out those lasts. Uh, well, it's, it's one way, anyway, so... And uh, the great thing is, this applies to the earlier gens too. Advanced GSE. I mean, the intricacies of what teams need change, of course. Um, but it's the same principle. Like, uh, in, if in uh, GSE, some guy is really not loving the idea of switching his sixth Pokemon into um, uh, Vaporeon, and uh, it's... He, the counter he has isn't really great, so he's just kind of scraping by. Vaporeon might be pretty good against his last. 
Uh, speaking of Zapdos, there's Shaman, so there goes that. Shaman's also going to help him take down bulky grounds. Uh, the whole shebang, defensive uh, synergy. Love it. And he's faster than Rotom, which is probably a Scarf, and um, I kind of went over what I was trying to illustrate with that. Rotom, I said, it's kind of as a fire thing. As a Scarfer, it, it kind of... It makes sense because it, you know, it hits on the special side. Uh, it can trick... It can force in Tarantar for Drachi, but the thing I want to illustrate here is the Flygon. I really don't think there's much of anything you can pick here that's like, yeah, I really want Flygon dead. I mean, Pursuiting Zapdos, that's just CB Tar taking out Zapdos. Zapdos is always pretty. Um, I'd do that even if I have a counter, especially since he doesn't know what Blue Wind has yet, so he wants to maximize his chances of doing damage to something that he can capitalize on later. I mean, it's, sure, Jirachi, sure, Flygon, um, which was not Scarf, uh, and obviously that, that, that just be that just be really weird. But let me pause for a second. But yeah, he's like, you know, I don't know what he's got yet. For all I know, he's got um, he's got a fast Breloom, and then I will have, you know, I'll take my chunk out of it. But you know what? I can now make the move of guaranteeing damage on something that I know will help me later as I figure out his team. So that was that move. And now the Scarf Shaman uh, coming in here goes me Sham, yada yada. So with that, that flag on was really a... I wouldn't have expected it. I, I'm guessing it was banned. I could see Mix, of course, but um, with the whole paralysis thing going on... I mean, he, look, he, he's got no water resists. Now, water resists is something sideline DPPers love to say. I mean, this guy's team is water resist. It's, it's garbage, and I strongly disagree with that. But it's something you might look for. Or... Nowadays, you might say, hey, in the metagame, there have been a lot of teams without water resist lately. That last might not resist water. Uh, let me take that into consideration. So, uh, yeah, let's, um, this was a great game, by the way. I, I would uh, encourage you to look up the full replay. But, uh, yeah, I just wanted to illustrate that point about, uh, the, sometimes last just doesn't work out, and sometimes the one on Blue Wind's end, it did work out. Um, it's not quite what you expected, but, you know, Shaman, with Flygon being a usual Scarfer and luring things, and, you know, and Jirachi not doing it either, or Heatran, then, you know, Shaman, good pick. So, uh, we could have, I'll do a half ass thing of saying, we could have picked up on that, seeing as his Jirachi was not Scarf as well as Flygon, so we're probably thinking, might, maybe Rotom, or, uh, and Heatran wasn't as, uh, or Heatran wasn't as well. I mean, Scarf Tar is the fastest Pokemon on the team. It's not the weirdest thing, but generally reserved semi stall. So, um, yeah, on an offensive team, I would have even expected like a Rotom, but Shaman is a solid pick that you, we probably could have picked up on. So, um, yeah, I think we're going to leave it off there. I can go into other examples, like if you link me replays and be like, how could I have possibly known that this asshole was running a Gyarados? Then I'd, I'd love to answer every question. But, um, overall, this, this makes it so it's, uh, I hope you've learned something from this, and uh, you're making yourself a more consistent player by investing in this part of the game. I mean, even in um, even in the future, just team preview, you're like, I'm never going to use this. I, I disagree. You can be like, well, this guy's been playing this way around my XYZ, and now I can start thinking maybe he doesn't have a better method to handle it. Maybe that maybe his landorus lacks earthquake. Stupid example, but it's, uh, it's the theory, the point. So, so uh, in conclusion, ask whatever you need to, and I uh, hope this helped you out a little bit. And, uh, yeah, um, I, we could do this for hours, uh, but I don't want to make a six-hour video. So, uh, I hope this was just concise enough for 40 minutes. Jesus. I hope it was just concise enough to where you uh, got your necessary info from it, and uh, yeah, I will be doing this more on other uh, intricacies in other metagames. So... Yeah, I'll catch you guys later.